Shall I start? Okay. Yeah, yeah, good morning, please. everyone. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I, Dr. Snehal Mishra, Assistant Professor, International Agribusiness Management Institute and Anand Agricultural University, and the CCPI of First Group un under Nahib Kas Project, welcome you all in lecture series of Agripreneurship. Now I request Dr. Aris Pundit, Professor and PI Nahib Kas Project and IABMI AU for his welcome address. Please, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Snehal. It's very nice. Uh, first of all, on behalf of our university and uh, on all the staff members associated with these projects, I take this opportunity to welcome our today's experts, Dr. Manoj Mishra. Mr. Saab, welcome. And uh, we are very curious to listen to you today on agri-entrepreneurship, though you have a broad area, but we we'll focus on uh, this agri-entrepreneurship. Uh, my job is today very limited, and just I would like to discuss only a few points about this project. And you know that so far, more than 1,100, maybe to be specific, 1,140 participants have got registered to listen to you, sir, from across different universities and uh, different organizations, some independent. And uh, as far as this project is concerned, uh, uh, Dr. Snehal will give brief introduction about you once your uh, lecture starts, but I shall not be dwelling on that. As far as this project is concerned, uh, our university, Anand Agriculture University, received these projects about one year ago. Now it is more than one year. And this project is under National Agriculture Higher Education Project's caste component. That is for uh, center of excellence, you can say. And this is on agriculture market intelligence. And the project's duration is initially three years, maybe extended, but so far it is uh, three years. And we have completed one year. The project has uh, two basic components apart from others. One is research component, and second one is uh, capacity building. Capacity building. And under research components, we have four major segments. One is on price forecast, demand and supply for major food grains, fisheries, livestock products, and uh, for other areas, global intelligence, including quality aspects, competitiveness, and in marketing is the main. And within that, even ENAM also regarding that. And uh, farmer producers, organizations, and commodity markets, futures market. These are the four major areas under research. And uh, as far as capacity building program is there, this is in all these areas. That is crops as well as allied sectors. And for all the stakeholders, focusing on uh, PG students and faculty members that is MSc, PhD students and faculty members so that they can take up the issues in their projects as well as in teaching. Uh, as also the farmers and policy makers and other interested people, maybe the traders. It's a broad area. And uh, most important point is that uh, under capacity building programs, one of the important series, we have here lecture series. Lecture series is on agri-entrepreneurship. And this today's lecture, your two lectures, sir, we are very keen to listen to you today. Very, very important, well focused in the policy nowadays, as well as universities are giving focus in this area through maybe management institutions and others. Uh, it's very, very important. This is a part of capacity building programs today. And this is under one of the lecture series. And Dr. Snehal Mishra, who is uh, already has uh, given the brief, uh, she's assistant professor and core co-PI in this group. And she's also organizing secretary of this lecture series on agri-entrepreneurship. So this is just beep, but we already have done some uh, work in this area, some uh, mm -hmm. commodity reports we have prepared, some uh, more than 16, uh, I think total capacity building programs, including some seminars, webinars, some lectures we have already conducted and uh, through various reports and uh, meetings with ICR, we have received a good feedback, Dr. Mishra, I'm sharing with you mm -hmm. and all the participants who are joining. And uh, we are here in this lecture series. And uh, this apart, we have some institutions, some uh, 26 members, faculty members from seven disciplines are there in this project. And uh, 25 members are already staff members, including 17 members, research staff, SRF and RH. And some five to six members are likely to join shortly. This is just beep. Some institutions like uh, IRMA, IM, you know very well, these institutions, they are also associated with us. Some foreign partners are also there. And we are working with them to do some collaborative work on research and capacity building programs, as well as some foreign visits or maybe exposure visits. This is just beef about these projects. 
and uh, already you know about this project and we shall be discussing these things with you we would like you to be associated not only today today is uh, two lectures very very important lectures as i told you more than 11 1140 participants have already been uh, maybe registered to listen you sir and this is very very important even ssips are there other things are there and many questions are there already we have received some questions from some people to to ask from you and you are uh, a true expert oh my god with the research background as well as in capacity buildings with the rich experience from edi uh, this is very very important and your focus is there so this is not only today but i think maybe later on we will be uh, very happy and we would like you to get associated in that so with these words once again i welcome you and all the participants and uh, my uh, colleague dr snehal bishra over to you snehal please thanks a lot your voice is not audible uh, dr snehal it is on mute Yes. Sorry for that. So I'll uh, um, again start. Um, so I'll give a brief introduction about Manoj Mishra, sir. He has a huge experience of over twenty-five years in enhancing entrepreneurial ecosystem, market-led solutions, social entrepreneurship, agri-entrepreneurship, value chain financing, and interventions. He has been associated with various international assignments with countries like Afghanistan, uh, Mauritius, Mozambique, and across India also. as a steering committee member he has been associated with policy formulation and implementation plan on cluster development agri enterprises and informal sector with niti aayog his recent successful policy discourse and program implementation framework development includes rural enterprise development with ministry of rural development farmer producer organizations and non farm based producer company policy uh, by nabard He has 18 years of association as professor of micro and small enterprise development and sustainable livelihoods, and project director of international training programs offered inputs on business models, eco-entrepreneurship, uh, technical uh, performance improvement of existing entrepreneurs, and many more. So, without any further ado, I invite our guest speaker to deliver lecture on first. Uh, sustainable agri entrepreneurship case study analysis and second enabling ecosystem for agri entrepreneurship and for participants you can ask questions in chat box so put your questions there we will ask uh, after the sessions um, will be done please sir over to you sir uh, thanks a lot uh, 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 my senior colleague uh, dr pundeer and uh, of course the 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 chairperson of this organizing uh, lecture series dr snehal bishra and i would uh, definitely welcome all the uh, participants into it uh, i was told uh, by dr pundey that uh, you know there are many questions you know there is a greek greek saying ki just when when we had found all the answers there were few more questions before us so when we have i thought that after working for so long and after attending to a lot of things i have found all the answers but if there are many questions i think that's a different uh, domain that we are trying to look at and we are opening up new vistas of uh, concerns uh, i think that's a very good proactive sign uh, to uh, kind of begin with i'll take 2 minutes to let you in into the subject of uh, Uh, what is called as uh, entrepreneurship and of course i will be overlapping a lot of things because mine is not a theoretical based this thing it's more of a you know applied uh, case based and, uh, uh, assessments and analysis which i have been able to do and try i'm trying to arrive at how do we actually define how do we actually look at a sustainable agri entrepreneurship and also what are the kinds of out of those cases if we can build upon there are certain kinds of uh, test hypothesis which we have been able to evolve in terms of what are the enabling ecosystem which are actually required for a sustainable agri agri entrepreneurship system so uh, this is uh, actually what i am i will be trying to deal with uh, two things which are important and i should begin with you know uh, there is a book called uh, small is beautiful and uh, the the author of the book mr scoop peter is is well renowned 
and this happens to be a good reading, a very small booklet kind of a thing. And I would suggest that uh, many of our uh, you know participants and of some of my colleagues, those who are associated today, if they can happen to find some time, they should actually go through it. And that is the reason why I'm saying is because we have seen at a time where there are a lot of uh, you know big multinationals, corporates, which are actually trying to do a lot of things. But the word I have picked up today, sustainable and agri entrepreneurship, is because of one very good reason that small is as well beautiful. And uh, that is what the message is the bottom line that I'll begin with. And uh, the second part is entrepreneurship has always been a function of three things. One is the entrepreneur, she or he himself, herself. And uh, that is one. The second one is the enterprise development process. Uh, uh, please don't consider this as a theory, but this is something which I'm just trying to bring myself in into the subject. So uh, the second one is the enterprise development process. And third is what is to do with enterprise related enabling ecosystem. So any agri entrepreneurship or any entrepreneurship for that matter has three different kind of you know, uh, domains which are very critically required. And uh, what is important today is to look at the first domain of what is called as the agripreneurs or the entrepreneurs, they themselves. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start sharing my screen with a presentation and uh, that will, uh, uh, I might not use the presentation in verbatim, but maybe you, that will give you a lot of leads to kind of ask certain questions. I might go, you know, all left, right and center across the uh, slides which are there, but these are just pointers for you. Just a moment. Is it visible now? No, sir. It is not visible. It is not visible. Just a moment. Is it visible now? No, sir. It is visible. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So uh, there are uh, three questions which I have myself uh, actually kind of uh, tried to frame. And uh, this is the uh, questions which I have in mind. What change is needed and what is the context? Meaning, uh, if you look at the sustainable uh, agri-entrepreneurship domain, there are uh, kind of certain conduits, there are certain mechanisms, there are certain systems, there might be certain processes, there might be certain tools, but what is the what is the need? What is the kind of systemic need? What is the operational need? What is the design need which is actually required? And uh, in terms of the uh, context that we have, that what are what is the agricultural context as well as what is the kind of context that we are operating in? Where are we doing what, in what manner? With whom are we trying to work around us? And second is for whom, actually at the end of the day, for whom are we looking at and how to facilitate this change? And how will this particular act uh, uh, to, to kind of uh, start with? There are certain things which I think which are important for all of us to know. And uh, these are the pointers which I'll be picking up 
after I get to define that, how do we actually get into a sustainable mode? And why am I talking about this particular thing? You should all be aware that uh, the, the entrepreneurship domain, if one is trying to look at, or the establishment of an agri enterprise, one is trying to look at the best source of, uh, you know, uh, consolidation of any such kind of enterprise as of now will be to look at who can actually get into this particular process. Now, who are the people who can actually help us evolve that? And since it is a rural context, I'm trying to look at what is the unemployment rate which is prevailing as of now. So these are some of the figure segregation of it, which you can have a look at it. Now, these are the people who, with whom we are trying to look at in terms of how do we move on to the next stage? And how do we actually engage everybody? The entrepreneur might be one, or but there might be certain, you know, uh, around it, there are people, those who will be able to facilitate it because these are the people with whom we actually need to work with. And that's the reason I'm talking about picking up people in order to address all these un unemployment ratios as well. And also to look at what can be the best feasible solution in terms of picking up from which particular age group in what manner. Uh, context here is important because uh, we also have to understand where are we, what we actually uh, mean by it. Uh, I'll pick up the last point first. When we say that it is agrarian and it is agri-entrepreneurship, I think we should also be thinking about the shift which is happening nowadays from the rural to the urban country and the kind of Hmm. Okay. So, so now you're back again. Yeah. So you need to share the screen again. I'm sorry. Yeah, is it visible now? Uh, yes. yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. Uh, sorry, there was some uh, issue in between. So uh, I just rectified it. Uh, so what is important to understand is that how well we can uh, pick up this trend of the uh, non-farm sector as well as picking up and how do we amalgamate the need and the choice. Because all said and done, if you look at the context, every 100 rupees of investment directly in an agri setting, uh, the expenses that is there is around to the tune of about rupees 64. So what is left at the end of the day is just 36 rupees in the hands of the people, those who are actually into the farming 
uh, as an uh, farming as a business. Now, this figures, what I'm mentioning is a, a figure which has been uh, found out by uh, Dr. Srivastava and Dr. Ramesh Chand, a Niti Aayog study in 2017. And uh, for every 100 rupees of investment, there is uh, the, the, the cash expenses that is going towards it is uh, 64 rupees. Now, in terms of looking at all this kind of context, what is important to consider here is that how well the non-farm sector can also be picked up. And these are the reasons why we are trying to look at whether there is a possibilities of looking at the context in which the literacy percentages of this, na this nature, this is the number that is available to us in terms of youth. There is some kind of a gender gap in the literacy as well. There is some kind of a migration rate, which is there. All these are the contexts which will help us define our business model and help us understand how can we integrate the sustainability component into it. Uh, there is uh, this particular uh, very complicated context that I'm trying to put up and uh, hope you will be able to uh, look at that if we are looking at agriculture, if we are looking at the uh, different set of developmental interventions, you know, uh, for every intervention that we are trying to talk about, at the end of the day, there is certain kind of an impact. There are, of course, uh, the, the, uh, the output outcome monitoring framework also gives us a, uh, a kind of a understanding that there are immediate impacts, there are specific impacts, there are result-oriented outcomes, and there are certain things. So in the context of the agriculture, you know, few people are into the actual domain of doing actually the work of production processes, which is helping, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things in terms of farm, agriculture, labor, and all those kind of things. But in effect, the specific impact that is coming out is increased profitability of the rural business at large. There is an increased trade. There is an increased affordability in the substances in food and which is leading towards higher rural income and then to the economic, economic growth and finally to the poverty reduction. So please try to appreciate as of now that this is the larger context in which we are trying to look at what is called as agri-entrepreneurship. In the larger context means right from the uh, enabling economic and regulatory environment to the pro and provision of goods, public goods, which will help mitigate agricultural price volatility and price volatility volatility is a major major issue as far as the agricultural sector is concerned which will also enable what is called as improved access to markets inputs information services and of course the capital and which will lead to there are of course a lot of legislations a lot of regulations which talk about better management of natural resources uh, i would appreciate if you were uh, able to connect it with the kind of initiatives what the government has been doing right as of now. And there are talks about watersheds, there are talks about, uh, you know, RKVY kind of a program, there are talks about incubations and all those kind of things. Now, which leads to what is called as both efficient employment because there are services which are resulting out of it, both in the non-farm as well as the agricultural labor. Of course, this is an increased productivity domain, which is also important to look at. And improved quality of products is what the customers are nowadays appreciating. And this is leading to some of the people, those who are le uh, leaning towards or moving towards increased profitability of the rural businesses and increased affordability and subsistence in food and of course the trade. We also have certain instances across, even for that matter, within Gujarat itself, where there are a lot of farmers, those who have taken export related license licenses. And I'm aware about few of them, those who are now, nowadays exporting turmeric powder. So there are certain impacts which are across board built in, turn, in terms of generating what is called as a higher rural income, which is leading towards greater food security, which has a developmental con uh, context as well, because we are trying to build in, build in what is called as an ecosystem of the FPOs. And there are defined governance mechanisms where we talk about certain set of benefit sharing, certain set of collective bargaining and the efficiency and the impact of it. 
So it is more in terms of we are trying to look at the FPOs or the the collective collectivization efforts. What we are trying to make more in terms of relevance, efficiency, effectiveness, and also to looking at look at innovations and to also bring in what is called as innovate uh, equity dimension to the whole concept of uh, the uh, agri enterprises. Now. It was a domain earlier that there are few people, individuals. Uh, let, let us refrain from taking names, but there are few individuals who have started off with something, but they have just been the, in the process of generating certain kind of an employment, and that employment domain has resulted into people getting into the supply chain, and then finally at the end of the day, what is called as certain uh, you know outputs coming out of it. And the wages are something which are being distributed across the people, those who are engaged with such kind of enterprises. So this is the complex domain within which we are trying to look at everything. Now, why am, am I putting up this slide is because this is the, you should appreciate what is called as a developmental intervention logic. And that logic is something very important because of this very logic, you will be able to identify what is the kind of enterprise or the entrepreneurship one should get into and what can be tweaked, what can be nurtured, what can be mobilized or what can be effectively transformed in terms of looking at the sustainability dimension of it. There are several logics which can go into it, but I'll try to put up a logic of three conditions. The first logic is I'm trying to put up in this particular figure itself. The first logic is more in terms of the agriculture-based economies, where we are talking about increased productivity and the increased productivity domain also has what is called as small holders farming because that's the domain in which we have to operate. We also have to talk about livelihoods and food security because of the increase the fertility and substance input that has to be brought about and also a greater sense of food security which is also coming up. So a classical agriculture based economy will try to identify the agri enterprises or the sustainability domain of the agri enterprises from these particular tape, uh, you know, brackets what I have just highlighted in red. That which is the small holder farmer with whom we have to engage with in terms of increasing the productivity dimension, which will also be in a way linked to what is called as livelihoods and food security for the masses. And that is the dimension within which some of the agri entrepreneurs might try to work upon. And that's the reason in the past, in the past, I'm using the word past just because of the two dimension that there was, uh, there is in fact, a lot of KVKs we are there and those KVKs were responsible for the, real, for the kind of extension mechanisms which have been established. And they were trying to look at the productivity dimensions in whatever crops. And for that matter, even ICR has come up with crop-based institutions, whether it is cashew nut, whether it is palm, whether it is uh, you know, spices, to look at how can we facilitate increased productivity. Now, from the uh, KVKs or the ICR institutions, those which were actually, of course, the KVK is more of an adaptive applied model, but these ICR institutions are interested with the task of what is called as so-called research to bring in what is called as a productivity dimension and domain of it. Of course, there are other several set of uh, you know, outcomes which are also associated, but there are certain you know, uh, enterprise categories which might come up. Somebody might get into, that fine, this is a very good research which has not come to the domain of KVK as of now, but we are trying to facilitate that across board. And we are trying to have certain centers which will be giving this kind of an agri information services. And also there will be certain set of rules across it. So this can be one way of looking at it. Now, let me put up a different domain of what is called as the transforming economy, economies. We in India as of now, are at the cusp of a, a kind of an economy, what is called as a transforming economy. We are uh, moving very fast ahead in the services sector as you all might appreciate it, and you might be aware about it. Uh, manufacturing sector, of course, is not that greatly progressing on well. I'm talking about minus COVID situation. Please don't uh, 
you know related to the covid situation because the present predicament is really really very challenging so uh, uh, what we are trying to see in the transforming economies of india as of now is that the services sector has gone multiple folds it has increased to almost 48% of the contributions to the gdp and also the manufacturing sector for that matter has kept pace around 25 26 28 or something like that and whereas the agriculture sector is showing its downward trend every now and then it is such a flexible ever changing figure that i have not taken that liberty to put that up but what is the transforming economy is giving us the uh, uh, you know kind of lead provision of public goods is one red area which is talking about the increased non farm employment potential there are several set of services which is to do with i'll come to the uh, cases which have actually facilitated it and how can farm and the non farm based services be integrated together to look at what can be actually possible to influence upon each of these factors it might not be just the non farm improve markets farm inputs in productivity and certain kind of quality dimension into the whole sector now given this whole domain of uh, this we are also talking about shifting to high value agriculture now this is also uh, 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 an area i'll just pick up a low hanging fruit and which is the which is the talk of the town nowadays is in terms of graduating to or transforming or progression towards what is called as organic uh, products and all and there are various efforts which have been uh, underway so non farm is one vehicle which can be actually used but at the same time how well the high value agriculture precision agriculture can actually take forward the whole dimension of all these connects that we are trying to look at these connects are important in what sense you will be able to relate it once you look at this particular uh, you know uh, impact outcome intermediate impact and the global impact so what is the context is you need to understand that where do we pitch where do we take the lead where do we actually bring in the our own innovations in such a manner that we are able to intervene appropriately in the context of a transforming economies to what the indian context is there might be several ways there might be several mechanisms now the third dimension which i will include here is there is also what is called as the rural urban income disparity now this rural urban income disparity is something which is important i'll just try to elaborate upon this particular point in a very nutshell the uh, kind of uh, you know uh, kind of cash flows which is normally required for a manufacturing sector and which is largely to do with maybe it or maybe other services sector for that matter and the kind of uh, break even that it generates the kind of operating cost that is uh, built into it and the kind of actually the net profit it generates is far higher than what agri enterprises have not been have now been thought about i'm talking about a very low investment and something very small i think i started off with that and that very small thing is actually what is required and with a very small little set of an investment what we are trying to look at that how do we actually bridge in the gap between the rural urban income disparity which is existing today and that is where lies the bargaining power of the people that is where lies seeking services for increasing the productivity that is where lies the kind of investment that we can draw upon in the agri infrastructure related domain and that is where the role of either kvk or icr for that matter or maybe for that matter all kinds of domain or the ecosystem that we will be trying to talk about later will actually facilitate this all things to happen uh please don't get more uh, into a complex confusing situation but what is more important and the uh, message which i am trying to put forth to, to to you is that if you can understand that where do we pitch in our transforming economies 
or if somebody is located in a pure agriculture economy context where do we pitch or let us try to look at the third context and that is the urban based economies there are three intervention focus one is always trying to look at how do we link farmers to the modern food markets now you will see all the time that there are certain kind of buyer seller meet there are, there are certain kind of producers those who are coming down to the directly to the urban situations and where they are trying to facilitate they are trying to put forward their own products with a particular kind of a label attached to it to say that this is what the kind of product is and this is the uh, the the composition of the product line and with a label of what is called as agronomies wherein there is link now there are at times what is happening is we are also trying to relate to what is the demand of the food industry now demand of the food industry might be of a certain nature the ginger might be required of certain quality very recently about 2 years ago uh, uh, central institute of medicine and aromatic plant lucknow they came up with what is called as an uh, carcinogenic related ginger which can actually have lot of impact on several medicines and there are several takers to it so what is we, what we are trying to look at we are trying to improve upon the quality of agri business and trying to relate to the food industry at large at times and also to the pharmaceutical industry at times and there are certain kind of initiatives or enterprises which are evolving out of it you can have several set of examples ginger is just one of them it can be of several nature now uh, uh, i was also given an information and also looked to that particular product with uh, With, with a lot of curiosity very recently post covid it is very extensively uh, available in the southern uh, region of our gujarat south gujarat region and uh, that particular crop uh, sorry uh, that particular crop is actually nowadays being harvested and that harvesting is going on just to come in with what is called as how do we try to introduce or improve upon the quality of the agri business by making a pulp of it which can give what is called as the immunity domain to the people in the covid situation and that is the reason why the food industry is kind of getting into a different situation now in the situation that there are many uh, bakers there are many uh, people those who are coming up with certain product lines who are saying that let us prepare a immuno sensitive dal immuno sensitive dal out of kanoda and that is how the, we are trying to improve upon the quality of agri business and the things have moved very fast uh, there is also a space you can also look forward to this kind of a, a website after uh, our session there is a space called creative dignity which is also this creative dignity is trying to link up farmers across board across several states and they are also looking at how well the agri business can be uh, helpful in terms of improving upon the quality of the food market because if you go to a store the kind of food products that you pick up the composition if you look at it requires certain shelf life it requires of course infusion of sugar into it and of course with the sensitivity that we have and with the mobility issues there are a lot of other issues the uh, the population that will desire certain food food uh, items may not actually be very comfortable in terms of having those kind of uh, food product lines which has a lot of sugar content only because that's the only preservative of a very uh, of a very low investment nature that we are trying to look at now there might be several ways and means and mechanisms and there is where lies what is called as the urban based economies interventions of course the third point we are trying to look at the environmental services point and which i'll try to deal with across in the next slides when i come across some of the Uh, uh cases which i'll be dealing with let us try to look at the urban based economies in terms of how are uh, the we are trying to look at uh what can be the kind of agri entrepreneurship domain which can evolve out of it there can be market for the environmental services you can go across board across various uh, uh, you know villages across various agro service centers 
and you can see how much of an investment the farmers are actually making and there is no such uh, case of uh, you know the kind of information services or the decision support system which is normally required in the agri information services which can actually feed into what is called as the market for the environmental services which fungicide which pesticide which uh, particular uh, insecticide will actually be able to better manage the natural resources at our disposal now this is something which is one way of looking at it uh, the second domain which we can look at the urban based economies is to link farmers to the modern food markets and that is what i was talking to you all about and there are certain examples which i have just cited but moreover over and above that there are the implication that happens is the specific impact that comes in is there are increased trade which is actually happening and which can actually be facilitated across board and i'm sure whatever economies that you uh, prefer to choose whether it is the agriculture based economies whether it is the transforming economies whether it is the urban based economies please keep in mind that the sustainability dimension of any agri entrepreneurship will have to take into account to who is your client for whom are you trying to do whether it is an agri based industry whether it is the customer uh, urban market customer whether it is just the rural market customer who actually is the domain whom you are trying to cater to at the end of the day i think uh, uh, your institution uh, in anand agriculture university has lot of such uh, good resource persons the people out there who can guide you through all the kind of managemental issues which might come up in an agri business but what is important is how do we identify and pick up which economies are we trying to address in what manner where are we connected to because that's a complete web that i have just now shown to you what are the kind of impacts that i'll be able to generate what is the kind of global impact what are the intermediate impacts and what are the specific impacts that i will be trying to look at now any business plan or any business entity across any agri enterprises appreciating these three domains of urban based agriculture based and the transforming economy based kind of our considerations will have what is called as what we normally refer to is a social cost benefit assessment of that particular enterprise please and that decides what is called as the sensitivity analysis which we normally end up doing and which will also give you some kind of understanding in terms of what is called as the sustainable agri entrepreneurship domain there are uh, uh, you know uh, domains there are understandings there are uh, institutions there are uh, facilitating organizations which actually appreciate it and i'm sure a uh, lot of things have been piloted and based on these pilots i'm trying to bring in what is a kind of that how do we consider the sustainability sustainability dimension of our work and how do we end up having established a sustainable enterprise now this is a very uh, uh contextual uh, discussion which i had uh what are the key te key takeaways it actually uh, there are, these are some of the few points which i could find out and which i'll try to relate to you and then we'll come to the cases it actually employs what is called as the entrepreneurial skills which are and there are models and innovative ideas which can economically solve the problems in the agriculture sector and increase the profitability of the farming business meaning what we are not talking about as i said to you in the beginning of this particular session that agri entrepreneurship is largely a function of the entrepreneur alone how do we conceive how do we uh, try to uh, look at the canvas or the business model which will help us come to a conclusion of what is called as entrepreneurial skills what are those kind of models what are those innovative ideas which can actually also solve the economic problems you know the agriculture uh, the the agriculture sector and also try to try to bring in the profitability and profitability in the context of the connects which i have just now referred to you there are a lot of connects immediate impact intermediate impacts global impacts immediate outcomes at various levels 
but believe me we are just not taking support of the agri knowledge that we have or the agri enterprise knowledge which we have or the agri business knowledge that we have we are also taking into consideration how is the market across how is the market around us in terms of the non farm sector how it is operating because most of these might be service based most of it might be having a lot of information base and that is what is the role of the critical information the second point actually deals with that because information dissemination is the key capital availability is another and of course streamlining what is called as agriculture supply chain is something which is also very very important i have left out farm management and mechanization just because these are the things which i'll pick up at length in the cases uh as i said before and for an output of rupees 100 the input cost is rupees 64 always uh, i have seen and i have come across some of the examples and there are several pass outs those who have thought of getting deep down into the agrarian sector by they themselves becoming into a uh, into a farmer uh, you might have uh, by being in uh, near to anand or by being associated with the agriculture universities uh, there is a name called uh, dr sarvadaman and that person is across, is very closely uh, there near to anand and a person who was there in the in overseas and there are situations where there is a low profit enterprise how can it lead and how can we get across or cross over the agrarian crisis by minimizing what is called as by incorporating what is the data driven decision making system and also reducing the unnecessary use of the input materials and this is how the whole salvage goes this is the key takeaway out of the uh, the last uh, few slides whatever i have uh, just now narrated but let us come down straight into some of the uh, uh, key words which we will be trying to look at this slide i'll take up later but let us come down to a particular uh, case there is a company called em3 agri it's a noida based company which is actually putting up what is called as farm services for every stage of the agri production life cycle it talks about services which are right across from the you know uh, end to end kind of a thing from land development to even the post harvest services now where do we look at maximizing the profit per unit of land for the farmers this is an initiative which is trying to look at what it is trying to look at intermediate impacts it is trying to look at the immediate outcomes it is also trying to look at the enabling ecosystem which is available to us in terms of facilitating some of these services it is also trying to look at what is the best cost which can be available to the people and it says very clearly the the motivator of this particular initiative is nothing but uber because uber services of the taxis is something what has been available to us ola is available to us but nothing of this kind of end to end subscription is something what has not been available in the past or this is just about 3 to 3 and a half years back this was an initiative and it talks about uh, services across the agri production life cycle now let us uh, uh, look at the service provider is one this is em3 agri but the people those who have taken these services how do they look at it there is a person called balkrishna meena who is based out out of uh, hasalpur village in hoshangabad district in madhya pradesh now i am trying to link up sustainability i am trying to link up link up uh, em3 agri services domain and this particular uh, company since 2014 it had sorry it started off in 2014 6 years back the first in hosangabad in madhya pradesh and there there is a farmer who is trying to seek the services what he has narrated is a machine that this, these people are providing this company is providing could cover 1 acre in 35 minutes a job that was otherwise done by taking two farm laborers and it took two days to complete now 
you can look at it's a machine operated so the quality will be good it will be the it will be uniform in nature uh, and there will be huge cost differences because of the kind of i narrated you to the first two slides because the kind of availability of the labor services across india in the in the agri market has also shot up what is called as the cost of cultivation and in a way the availability of the labor now the contextual part is quite huge and i think you might have always been uh, uh, you know apprised about it by your professors out here in the eu now this particular farmer bal krishan krishan meena is virtually using all the em 3s agri services across the range of the farm equipments now what are those farm equipments why am i talking because these are something what you will say that these are already there there are custom hiring services centers there are certain uh, people those who are within the domain of the rural background or in the urban areas people are giving these services but this company is talking about laser leveling machine now you can look at the precision with which that company talks about the recent heavy flood which has uh, sorry the heavy rainfall which was there in the past 15 days or 20 days i think that is also uh, gujarat is a recipient to it i have been hearing the news that there are various regions across in north gujarat as well as in some parts of saurashtra region which have actually devoid the farmers and access to their field because their farm their farms were not leveled there is no proper drainage the standing crop cotton crop has all already been devastated the groundnut crop as such also is on the verge of it devastation because there is a lot of an issue of the seed setting which is the norm, normally the stage at which it is and there are issues of fungicide and all this so just because the water logging and the moisture and the dampness which is there so the precision this company is talking about the laser leveling machine now there are a lot of equipments ranges which are available which can which might not have been actually been a, a product of the central in, uh, institute of agricultural engineering bhopal i'm not just limiting myself to the, to the domain of these em agri em3 agri services which are built across a regular uh, you know custom hiring service center but what was the kind of study and the the center, centers which they have established they are called as samadhan they are talking about precision and that precision is actually trying to look at the challenges the the kind of issues and which will bring in what is called as a return on investments which is of the nature what the farmer like bal krishna mina talks about uh, and also is 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 appreciative of the kind of uh, returns which they are they are trying, trying, trying to evolve uh let's uh talk about a person called arvind korov now arvind korov he grows sugarcane wheat paddy arhar and all these pearl millet and all these kind of things uh there are uh, you know compositions of now harvesting threshing now how does it happen uh, is it the punjab uh, you know harvesters which have actually made this things happen in what way in what manner all this kind of an adaptive technology which has come in and the kind of reduction in the number of days which is there is actually trying to bring in the cost i am talking about all service based and these are some of the examples of some of the farmers those who have actually taken certain kind of uh, you know uh, support certain kind of uh, services from this em3 uh, agri services this is actually a, a a kind of a unit which was established 2 years ago by rotash mal and uh, not educated just an 8th class pass person but his son uh, adwitya and uh, they have come up with what is called as how to get into an uberized farm services and which is called which is making accessible and affordable to the indian farmers the technologies and the equipments and we are just not, not talking about technologies which are home grown technologies alone but might be also global technologies and equipments which can be fed into the farming services where the people pay for the services because these are some other things which are possibly only which are only possible once we are trying to look at certain you know uh, early adapters for that matter 
now the early adopters will bring in those changes to kind of understand what is the change that em3 is talking about and how will this increase our uh, returns out of it uh, by getting into certain pilots em3 has been able to raise uh, what is called as an equity funding support of 27.5 crores from soros economic development fund and uh, this has all been facilitated by the aspada investments a fund that focuses on early stage businesses in india and it is just not the agriculture but also in healthcare and education as well so uh, there are people those who are facilitating it the reason why i have put in all these uh, statements in first person is you will be able to appreciate that there are institutions there are people those who are trying to facilitate and look at in terms of the possibilities of making it accomplish and deep down the line how can these pay per use services is gaining traction and gaining access into the domain of the agri entrepreneurship and agri enterprises now uh when we were uh, initiating the agri business center concept with uh, small farmer agri business consortium manage national institute of uh, agri uh, the the hyderabad based manage institution and also nabard at that point of time that was long back in the year 2002 uh, i think there was a lot of talk and discussion in terms of what can be the crucial or what can be the challenging input as a sustainable agri enterprise mechanism or a sustainable agri enterprise input services for that matter and some of the service sector enterprises can actually uh, make the farming sustainable make the services sustainable and also for the for that matter the business viability will be quite important because uh let me tell you i have been all through in my life uh, talking about the viability and uh, finances which should draw upon which should come out of any business but what is important for us to also look at all these economies that we have the kind of dimension that we are talking about the kind of clients that we are talking about the kind of conduit that we are talking about the kind of market demand which is generated generated nowadays that we are talking about i think we have to have certain very appropriate level of services which will have critical impact i'm talking about critical impacts and those critical impacts are manifold you can look at intermediate impacts you can look at global impacts you can look at also the viability factor and i'm sure the em3 kind of agri enterprises can help us establish in a way not only the sustainability of the enterprises alone but also looking at how well the sustainability of the farming as an occupation can be looked at where we are talking about the farming as a service now this is one uh, way of looking at it now what did they do beyond this em3 is this not alone let me tell you that it is just not that two people the father and son duo but at the same time what they are trying to look at is certain kind of partnerships so sustainability dimension in what way in what form can actually be further uh, you know deepened and what are the different components within which we can look at the sustainability dimension is also to look at one way of what is called as partnership EM3 is talking about partnership with ITC Ichopal they are talking about partnership with Syngenta Foundation Farmers Cooperative SFAC John Deere the tractor company and the Trimble that the equipment based companies uh they have taken support of the sanchalaks because they are the people those who are trained in providing services of the ITC Ichopal and they are reaching out to several set of farmers with Syngenta Foundation Uh, they are actually trying to look at irrigation facilities on a built operate and transfer basis for the water deprived belt in maharashtra for small and medium farmers it is also likely to be expanded to the other states and i am sure you will be able to uh, appreciate that they are also uh, uh, trying to venture into gujarat they have started off with lot of things but they are still trying to make a headway into it uh in fact they have also tied up with john deere in in terms of equipment training and all so what i'm trying to communicate here is 
it is just not alone the services so any of these enterprises any of the establishment any of these business opportunities that we are trying to look at which is having a dimension of a built in model i am saying built in model of sustainability has to have certain key areas what is called as partnerships as well we might not end up having everything subsumed within one particular services we might not be the best entity in terms of facilitating or funneling down all the services what is required for our clients but at the end of the day this is based on partnerships and there are specialized agencies where we can get into might be for training might be for technology development might be for seeking the services of the human resources which they have been able to create now this kind of an integration is actually desired and required which is actually which will which might facilitate the sustainability dimension of the agriculture entrepreneurship um of course i uh, uh, you know missed upon one important dimension and what is also called as innovation now it is just not always the product innovation which matters it is also the process innovation which matters and innovation and uh, uh, there are uh, you know words which are there which i will not pick it up just to not make it more complicated which actually facilitate this facilitates this innovation is more in terms of looking at what are those complex web and at what level which is looking at trade which is looking at facilitating services which is looking at facilitating productivity so there is innovation possible at each and every level and that innovation is always trying to look at where the sustainability dimension can be put in now let us not talk about just the sustainability in the context of the normal that we have established something and it is quite likely that it should remain sustainability has a different word what is called as relevance and it is very closely related and for us as an agri entrepreneur to become relevant has to have effectiveness has to have efficiency has to have innovations has to have equity dimension into it because as you know the spread of i will not get into the figures i have all those uh, recent figures and i had to speak to professor supal singh to, to get the recent figures because uh, the dimension of the uh, small and marginal farmers if you ac accumulate it cumulatively that's a very uh, you know a large uh, uh, domain and dimension and uh, uh, professor supal singh paper on agri enterprises and agri businesses clearly talks about it and there are various dimensions in which one can pick up those equity dimension because let me tell you one thing that that's the segment the small marginal which is actually also getting into what is called as another sustainable agri enterprise or entrepreneurship and a domain which is related to livestock i am confining myself today the discussion to the agriculture sector alone i'm not taking it to the livestock uh, domain as a sub a subsector to it but the overall sector that we can talk about and which will address relevance efficiency effectiveness innovation and equity is what will lead to what is called as sustainability and partnerships is what partnerships is a form of an innovation that we are trying to talk about it's a kind of a business innovation model it is also a kind of thing that we are letting off our expertise in terms of more in terms of what is called as services and that and that is the arena where we can thrive upon but there are specialized agencies which are trying to look at it now what are the other challenges now the challenge is also huge the challenge for em3 is to how to scale faster because as you know and uh, any business uh, plan would try to look at scaling would try to look at capacity utilization will try to look at cash flows which will have certain kind of uh, the break even period so how to scale it faster and bring into uh, and also continue to be more relevant is something is a challenge for every such set of an enterprise because it's very easy talking about in a very uh, theoretical academic professional sense what is called as sustainability dimension but what is important is 
the scale is actually very, very critical. We are operating actually in a low scale environment. Now, why did I say this? I, I, I say that low scale environment means I'm not talking about the farming community. I'm talking about the people, those who, whom we are associating with, whom we are taking along in facilitating the service sector. And that is a non-farm sector in, in, uh, or, or in one way, because they are the people, those who are more uh, aligned to it, because they might not be having those set of educational skills or those, those set of soft skills to actually facilitate those set of information services that we are talking about. So we are, we should be building our, our economic sense upon, around training, around maintenance. So these are something which is to be looked at and how do we do that is, is, is another set of thought process. One should uh, always think about it. Uh, agriculture for that matter, as you all know, uh, in effect, uh, I myself, I will put up and several of you, those who are there as of now as the academic uh, you know, fraternity will always say that every one of us have some agriculture holding or something or the other, which we have in the, in our, uh, you know, uh, rural setting that from which we come from, but it has never been aspirational for us. We have never, ever been trying to associate ourselves with it. So how do we make it cool and reclaim its primacy? is important. Meaning, how do we try to associate ourselves in one way or the other so that we are able to build upon the strengths of our understanding, build upon the strength of our connections, build up our strength of the kind of understanding which we have been able to build upon in terms of the point that we are talking about, what is called as sustainability, and relate ourselves to make it more successful and in a way address those outcome-based issues and challenges. I might not say that on the first way, uh, in the first lap of it, or in the first stage of it, you might think about a global impact. You might think about it, some of it, what is called as significant intermediate impact. And you might also, might be even not that, you might even think of it that what is possible in the immediate environment in terms of <coughs> facilitating services, or maybe even increasing the productivity or even kind of setting up pilots. So these are some of the few challenges which we have. And if those set of challenges are able to, we are able to kind of conceive it well a bit forehead because any entrepreneurship, I will, uh, when I will try to define entrepreneurship, particularly in the agricultural context, I will try to define it in the manner that an investment which is having a calculated risk. We are all taking risk. We are talking about sustainability with a risk factor attached to it, with a scale factor attached to it, with an innovation or with a very little uh, maybe uh, understanding at times of the kind of institutional co convergence or coherence that we will be able to draw upon. We might not be even able to be offer the kind of trainings or we, the economic sense within the trainings might not come up, but these are the set of challenges. We have to have an association of this kind, or I would appreciate if there are certain mentors within the Anand Agriculture University or the across Gujarat or several other people, those who are listening uh, uh, to the students or to the uh, academic fraternity at large who are trying to conceive this whole idea of what is called as sustainable agri entrepreneurship models. And which has, and there are, uh, you know, uh, financial ratios which are available to us, which economics has given us in terms of reckoning. Uh, how do we actually assess some of these? How do we build in the cost factor to it? And how do we actually look at the business viability at the end of the day? And there where lies what is called as a sustainability dimension. And there where lies what is called as the potential and what is giving us a constructive dialogue to the government also in terms of offering certain uh, you know, uh, pilots, which will be the proof of concept for the government to take up and might be a proof of concept for the doubling of farmer's income kind of a thing. Because these are the vehicles, these are the kind of uh, instruments which will help us understand that what is that, and it is not across board. I am not saying this whole concept might apply 
in a very classical sense across all across india or even all across gujarat but it can be something which is helping us reclaim what i have mentioned the primacy part of it and that primacy is uh, to my knowledge and to my understanding is defined upon what is called as because we are talking about amdabad surat vadodara anand but there are some transforming economies there are some urban based economies there might be a stand alone certain centers maybe i'll take a small uh, town name called as gondal near to rajkot which has more of an agriculture based economies <clears throat> upleta for that matter maybe uh, uh, not mehsana but somewhere down the line uh, bechraji kind of a location which has been offering and which has a potential to offer all these agricultural economies to a conduit to move towards what is called as transforming economies and where where we can assess how the productivity or how different dimensions across the kind of web that we are talking about is actually leading us to establish what is called as a sustainability dimension to to the agri enterprises uh i'll uh, uh, try to take a small little uh, break here for uh, the interest of this particular session i'll try to divide up because i have divided it in two parts and uh, the first part is something which i have just spoken about uh, uh, i would request if there are appropriate uh, you know questions which will help me also to deliberate upon the next session of the enabling ecosystem because that also requires another uh, an hours time or maybe 50 55 minutes and then we can have the last set of questions for that particular session so uh, dr snehal if you can facilitate few of the questions or if you can um, you know manage to uh, uh, facilitate it if that will be really great yes sir we have few questions so we will start asking so that uh, we can take a break so if you want to take a break of 5 minutes that will be also good uh, otherwise we will start with the question answer round okay whichever is good for you uh okay just give me 2 minutes of break yeah sure sir fine we'll just get back please thank you okay so we are taking 2 minutes of break and we will be back in 2 minutes if you have any questions please put in the chat box we will ask all the questions we will try to ask all the questions uh, given by you we have already listed out many questions that were asked in the chat box so please put if you have any further
Yes, madam, I'm, I'm back. Hello. Hello. Give me those questions. So, shall we ask questions or you will uh, conduct the next lecture? So, you, uh, so you are still mute. On mute. Sorry, uh, let's have the questions first. Oh, and sir, I'll ask a few questions. Yeah, please, please. So, the first question is, um, how carbon finance or carbon credit system will help in agribusiness or agripreneurship? Oh, that's great. Um, <clears throat> uh, let us take this question, please, okay. Okay. Later on. for okay. the enabling ecosystem part, because mm -hmm. there I'm talking about uh, specific, uh, you know, credit apprentice mechanisms and all. Sir, uh, related to that, I think we yeah. have a few questions related to supply chain management. Uh, if you allow me, okay. then I'll ask those questions. Yeah, yeah, please, please, please. Um, so when there is any supply chain management disruption, like now we have during COVID-19 situations, so how can we create new rule for agri-entrepreneurs in urban sector or maybe in rural sector? Okay. How to manage that's this a very good. That is a very, that's a very good question. Yes. And... Um, I think that supply chain disruption, what has happened during this COVID time is also very, very uh, important that we should be looking at. See, uh, I'll, I'll rather pose one question to the person who has asked it, that okay. uh, there are CIIs, there are FIKI, there are ASOCHAMs, you know, several such set of uh, bodies which are there. But do we have any equivalent body for the farmers? I'm sure the person who is uh, asking this question will appreciate that there is no body. And that is the reason we are all talking about certain kind of an institutional bodies, kind of FPOs, which can actually help establish uh, the, the only just what is called as the bargaining efficiency of the produce which the people are getting into. Yes. But at the time, the CII, FIKI, SOHM has a very different role to play. And they actually have been doing it for the manufacturing sector at large. And that is the body which is, and we are all saying that India is a country where uh, the agricultural economy matters a lot. And uh, we have so many agriculture university, but you know, the reason that the, the, why this supply chain disruption is happening and the way in which one can look at is to look at creation of certain kind of such institutions, which will look at the business uh, management and the business operational part, which is on the lines of what is called as CII, FIKI, SOHM, etc. Okay. And uh, uh, we have been very fast enough in also providing for uh, the, the export promotion councils and all. But these are all operational bodies. Where are those, uh, you know, uh, bodies which are lobbying across board with the government, enabling what is called as suitable policies and the environment which might not bring in such kind of disruption because ultimately at the end of the day, what we have as of now is you will all appreciate that there is a reform of the model APMC Act, which has come in and that yes, APMC sir. Act, reform, which has uh, also, uh, uh, we are trying to integrate it with what is called as decision by the government to uh, provide for infra development fund. And there is a, on 8th of August, 
and I was speaking to one of the district development managers of NABARD. In fact, NABARD has been given this particular responsibility of facilitating certain supply chains, uh, related uh, you know, infrastructure and certain support mechanisms for looking at the disruptions which have happened in the COVID situation. There is a special uh, uh, district level body, which has the collector is the uh, secretary of, of that particular body, sorry, the, the chairman of it. And the DDM NABARD of that particular district is the member secretary of it. And they are trying to rope in certain proposals which can help establish what is called as uh, the uh, the supply chain mechanisms in a, in a very different way. Because I've seen now um, that the prices of milk have fallen. There have been uh, uh, disruptions in the purchases of wheat. The fresh crops have actually been affected. The labor movement has affected. The uh, machineries uh, availabilities have been affected. So there is a demand disruption. In fact, uh, the, the meat consumption has also been significantly impacted. The biofuel consumption has drastically dropped. Mm. And see, so these are all, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we, we have to look at what is as the uh, role of such kind of infra development funds, which is which is which has been put across by the government. But at the same time, uh, we should also appreciate that uh, we as agri entrepreneurs or uh, the kind of assessment that we are trying to look at, we should all, always analyze what is called as the consumption trend. And that consumption trend across has to be based on certain traceability. Traceability means that from where does it originate, in what manner, and uh, what is the trusted trademark which is actually going to be offered to that particular product line. And that will, in a way, establish what is called as a clear-cut, uh, a sound uh, supply chain mechanism for the supply side accentuation to happen. And that will also take care of climate change, the depleting natural resources, that will take care of the COVID kind of a situation. All, all those kind of things. So we should be very, very uh, methodological in understanding the consumption trend in a way, which establishes, which uh, further takes care of uh, the reforms in such a way that the, the, the uh, enterprises which are established are actually more rooted towards the consumption trend. And that is, again, I'm talking about that we are uh, getting back into short supply chains where the uh, aggregator has a role, the Monday board has a role to play, the operator has to play a role. Uh, and I think uh, the conventional APMC system, the processes and the retailers and all those transaction-based services which was there earlier, I think that is also demanding certain signals from the outreach to the farmers at the pocket level. And that is where the supply chain can be actually strengthened and which will also look at what is the kind of disruption that we are talking about. So one more question, if I'll ask, yeah, so that would be okay. Yeah. So um, what certifications do FPO require to claim the sustainable production of the product? Please give few examples of sustainability certification in case of food processing industry. Okay. Uh, see, the sustainability uh, dimension, as I have said, has uh, its roots in various aspects. Uh, there is no clear-cut body of certification which is talking about a sustainable agri-enterprise alone. But I'm looking at sustainability dimension in four different sense. One is I'm talking about an institutional sustainability, the agri-enterprise itself. And I'm sure there are a lot of financial ratios which are available to us, which will help us establish that what is the sustainability dimension of that particular agri-enterprise which has been established in terms of looking at all those economics of that particular operations, what is happening within that particular institution. So that is one. The second one is I'm talking about the operational sustainability. Now the operational sustainability is built upon the, uh, the supply chain dimension in terms of demand, supply, consumption, trends, and there are, uh, uh, and I'm sure the, the agri information services, which is which I have just spoken about, is actually talking about a decision support system which will help us arrive at what is called as a clear cut line of the operational sustainability. And so the institutional sustainability, operational sustainability, third one is what is called as a financial sustainability. 
Now, the financial sustainability is what is the kind of agencies EM3 have done is in terms of looking at or arriving at a certain kind of venture capitalists, certain kind of investments, which can help think about what is called as a scaling up mechanism, the kind of investment which is required, the kind of technology which is uh, which can be accessed, uh, which is the technology which we need to develop in-house, which is the technology which we need to import from out, and what is that which is helping us in a more viable sense. So what I'm trying to communicate is, we will have to break down this sustainability dimension into various dimensions. And that is where we can try to look at. Uh, the day we are having CII, SOHM, uh, kind of a body, which is linked to the agri enterprise sector, I think I'll be the first person to talk about how can we evolve what is called as a sustainability dimension or sustainability index uh, uh, to the measurement and the kind of aspiration which that particular person has desired to ask about. Thank you. So we do not have any certification process up till now? Huh? As such, there not. is nothing. As, okay. There are some of them which are existing in the European domain, but I think I should not mention the context. Okay, okay, sir. So we will start with the next session, sir. I'll put all the questions in the last. There are many. Yes, okay, thank okay. you. So we will oh, start with the next session on uh, enabling ecosystem for agripreneurship. Yeah. Over to you, sir. Yeah, please. Okay, uh, let us begin with the, the, the enabling ecosystem part. And I'll uh, try to, first of all, uh, <clears throat> look at uh, three different uh, you know, domains. One is the knowledge ecosystem. The second one is the, uh, the incubation ecosystem. And the third one is, of course, the missing banking ecosystem. Uh, it's very easy to write and uh, you know relate it but at the same time uh, let us try to understand why am i speaking and what is the reason why we are talking about all this let us start with what is called as the missing knowledge ecosystem now uh, the uh, innovation what is required what is desired and what is actually possible within the context of providing those set of uh, information, services, technology, access is something which is very, very critical. Now, those are the kind of uh, things which might be possible by creating a cadre of what I was talking to you all about in the first half of the presentation in the initial slides, the relevant youths who can be actually be, they may not be agriculture graduates, they may not be post graduates, they might not have done agribusiness management, but they can be actually the vehicles or the cadres who can be exposed to certain kind of new ideas of such kind of knowledge ecosystem which is existing elsewhere. And that enabling ecosystem is nothing but creation of a cadre of business development service providers. And that business development service providers is already existing in a very different way with a different name, with a different nomenclature. And one of the service providers which is existing right in front of us are the KVKs, but they are the institutions with certain subject matter specialists. They are the institutions which actually talk about uh, performing field schools. They are, the, they are the people, those who are trying to look at certain uh, you know, human resource cadre which can facilitate that kind of 
what is kind of a behavioral change strategy among the community to bring in what is called as an enabling ecosystem. Now, believe me, I am putting every ecosystem, the words which I have put in, every one of them actually offers a enterprise business opportunity to us in terms of a sustainable agri enterprise ecosystem. This is something which one can look at. How can we build in what is called as the soft skills within the cadre? Already the unemployment rate is what was visible to you in the initial slides, the both in the male and the female population. And there is, and, and with the kind of uh, feminization of the agriculture sector and the gender segregation of the roles and responsibilities in the, in the agriculture sector, what I would also emphasize upon is there, that there are certain set of soft skills which have to be built around to create certain kind of business development service cadres, which will help us trigger, which will also help us put in what is called as the domain skills, which is very, very specific to the context. It is just not the seed rate alone. It is It's just not the spraying of insecticide alone. It is just not the market interface taking. There are much more than that what is actually required and desired. We all know about it. And I think we have, uh, 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 we are, we are, we, we are uh, uh, witnessing several such set of uh, pilots. I'm aware about uh, uh, one such uh, pilot which was done uh, some years back by uh, the Sadda Kushinagar uh, Agriculture University. And uh, that was related to agri information services on the decision support system of the farmers. And that decision support system actually had a built in criteria of coming up with uh, the exposures, the soft skills development, and domain. I'm not aware about what's the actual outcome of it which has happened, but that's the kind of knowledge ecosystem I'm trying to emphasize upon. And believe me, this is something which will trigger the kind of demand and the supply side is what is called as sustainable agri enterprises. If there is a demand, I think if we talk about a demand in certain pockets, say about one taluka or maybe two talukas or five talukas, if we are able to instill this kind of a demand among the people or the community with the creation of this kind of a cadre, and with the inculcation of required soft skills, I think that's the day on which we can have certain agri enterprises, whether it is in the sector of processing or whether it is in the subsector of services, or even for that matter, manufacturing for that matter uh, as processing part. But there will be definitely certain kind of domain skills which will be arriving at, at our level which can help fill in the void of what is called as the knowledge ecosystem. And we have all the kinds of accessibility possible, particularly in the digital transformation, what is happening. Somebody has to have, get into what is called as filtering of all these digitization processes. What is the digital transformation which has happened is, has to identify what works where it works, in what manner. We have, we have to funnel it down. And those set of domain skills are quite important. I'm aware about, I'll just give you a system. Uh, sorry. Uh, there is one, um, uh, you know, cluster, and that is very near to, uh, that is in Saurashtra region. And uh, Rajkot happens to be a hub of a place where there are various manufacturing industries and people are quite entrepreneurial in nature. Similarly, in Mehsana region, there are certain, uh, you know, a certain kind of an ecosystem of a different nature, which is enabling the manufacturing sector and the urban economies to flourish. But at the same time, I am aware about several individuals, those who have studied, understood the consumption pattern, understood the kind of production pattern, understood the demand uh, side of it, 
they are also actually trying to create a demand for what is called as the oils which are uh, or the or the oil seeds which are being grown there now what people used to do earlier in in the Sorry, was there a connection problem in between? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need okay. to share the screen again. Okay. Uh, this was like I was just narrating to you the kind of uh, uh, you know the knowledge which has been generated across in terms of looking at what can be the way out in terms of using the local resources, which can also bring in what is called as local economic development which can also bring in some kind of addressing the health hazards which are associated with eating the tin oil which is normally sold in the market with certain kind of permissible inert matter into it now these are the kind of domain skills these are very surface level information which i am trying to share and if you go to the level of the em3 where we are talking to talk about uh, we, wherein we are trying to identify the laser leveling mechanisms or the laser leveling machines kind of a thing. I think those are the levels at which we should be actually working upon and where it might be defined on the contour lines, it might be defined on the undulating nature of the ter terrains that we are all uh, associated with. But this is where a small enterprise of this nature can be sustainable and which can actually have a lot of enabling ecosystem impact for what is called as a knowledge ecosystem. And that knowledge, that information has to have, can only be drawn upon by the creation of the rural cadre. And which I'm also trying to address unemployment, I'm trying to address health, I'm trying to address the sustainability dimension, I'm trying to address the disruption of the supply chain which has actually happened. So these are, this is one way, way of looking at one of the ecosystem which is normally desired. Now, there can be several examples which I have. I've also refrained from examples in the past, just I've taken up EM3 as one of them because that is, I can elaborate upon it in detail because of the constraints of time and all. But there are several cases which we can conclude and which have actually been instrumental. What has ITC e Chopal done? ITC e Chopal has created Sanchalaks and it has brought in what is called as it has tried to fill in the gap of what is called as a missing knowledge ecosystem. They have exposed several people to new ideas. They have triggered in terms of a certain set of soft skills by means of training, establishment of certain digitized information sharing mechanisms. And uh, there are uh, domain skills which have been built up. And that is what is leading to a lot of changes across Madhya Pradesh where they have started off with, and which has done wonders in terms of giving a lot of bargaining power at the end of the day. And there are several set of, set of small little enterprises, but of a viable nature, addressing the health hazard, addressing the unemployment scenario, addressing what is called as the sustainability dimension, because the more bigger you grow, the more likely you are going to be disrupted with the kind of situations that we have just now looked at or that's one of the things which we can uh, uh, arrive at. Let's come down to the second missing incubation, uh, missing ecosystem, what is called as the incubation ecosystem. Now, uh, uh, the, the startup which I was talking about, EM3, that startup has made a headway just because it was able to arrive at certain kind of uh, mechanisms to gain access to a venture capitalist or also gain access to certain line of credit. And these are the some of the, uh, uh, or even they have uh, tied up with certain institutions, as I've mentioned, 
uh, with uh, uh, John Deere or with uh, several other institutions in terms of looking at how well they can be more instrumental in addressing what is called as the common startup pitfalls. The more you try to attempt the multiple levels of associations, what you try to associate yourself with, I think it's better to look at where can we have certain kind of an incubation facility which is available for the uh, the startups and those incubations are of two nature one is not only in the startup domain but also in the accelerators domain now there might be certain people those who have already started off with there is a feasibility intelligence which is actually required how to establish the feasibility intelligence and to look at the personalized advisory services is something which I will talk to you in the next slides. But the incubation system which will facilitate, and I'm trying to take the lead out of the digital transformation and the kind of, I think every second day we are encountering a lot of new apps, those applications which are possible even to give information in terms of information which is required, the critical information which is required for a startup to become more viable and the critical set of information which would be required even by an entrepreneur for that matter to become viable. So there are personalized advisory services of some nature which will facilitate, which should facilitate the incubation. There is also a need of what is called as a feasibility intelligence which is normally required. And that feasibility intelligence, I will elaborate in the next slide. And also, of course, the common startup pitfalls which are there, which is talking about innovation, which is talking about uh, uh, strengthening the ecosystem within, and which is which might be just not built upon within, but it might be built upon partnerships. So these are some of the incubation ecosystem which is normally required. We go with an idea to a to a RKBY program with a startup idea. We, we have a very good technology, but we sometimes fail to associate them in terms of what is the existing uh, knowledge which is there in that particular domain and which will help that particular startup to incubate well. I use a term what is called as auctioning of the agri enterprises. Auctioning of agri enterprises means what does auctioning mean? When we go to a place where we auction, we put rates. So I auctioned one of the first generation agri entrepreneur to a market, to an enterprise, which is well established into technology. I auction a first generation entrepreneur to a technical institution, to an ICR institution, which is interested with technology development and try to provide that these are the number of years within which this is the price tag at which this particular institution will offer its services. It will be a user-based services and which will help facilitate or incubate at the end of the day that particular entrepreneur. So this will be a personalized advisory services where the ICR institution is there, the enterprises that are there. They are all trying to facilitate that kind of uh, services into it. I'm not talking just in a theoretical sense. I'm talking it in the sense that this has been actually possible and it has happened. Where it has happened? In the domain of what is called as the organic farming related domain, which is a talk of the town, uh, talk of the town nowadays. Now, how does it work? Tata for that matter is uh, having its uh, several set of services across board, but it has also what is called as a Tata administrative services as a wing, which was discontinued quite some time back, but has certain individuals, those who have evolved out of it, <clears throat> and those who are based out of certain locations to understand what is the feasibility intelligence, which is required as a part of technology development, and which can actually facilitate certain partnerships which can facilitate what is called as organic certification, which can facilitate the process of how to make an organic product at the end of the day. And also look at the urban economies model of where can we connect with the market. They have been able to tie up with certain corporate bodies. And I was 
uh, yesterday given an information i was speaking to uh, uh, rinki vora she is the person who is a, uh, the uh, head of the jk tires corporate social responsibility what they have done is within jk tires they devote a particular week for the connect which is being provided by the tatas to sell the organic produce and this has been possible just because there are certain technologies there are certain seeds related information there are input related information this is where the feasibility intelligence information is of critical nature so this is a incubation of a different nature incubations that we all look at or we are all looking at in the context of uh, the rkvy because i have been closely associated with this particular domain as well and i have been trying to discuss it out with the icar people as well that there are people you know uh, uh, personalized advisory services of this nature are very important to be offered to the agri entrepreneurs which will help them incubate and this is an intelligence which is required by them and which will help them uh you know not get into the initial pitfalls what is normally there for the startups or even for that matter the accelerators and it is an institutional role maybe at times it is a technology based role but it is very important and i would again come back to the word auctioning and that auctioning is what is normally required and desired it has been possible the export which i was talking to you about the export license which has been taken by some of the farmers and some of the farmer producer organizations and they are exporting maybe turmeric powder maybe the ginger powder for that matter they have done it just because there has been proper tie up which has happened with the kind of demand which is existing elsewhere and that's the incubation that is actually required and desired an incubation may not be just limited to standardization of that particular process or the product so it is more towards because agri sector is such a sector where we are talking about you know various stakeholders various players which facilitate an enabling ecosystem even if i have the best services if even if i have the best technologies it might be just confined to a smaller area it might be just confined to labs alone at certain times but this is something an incubation of this kind is very very critical a uh, knowledge ecosystem is what i have dealt with incubation ecosystem is what i have just spoken about but believe me incubation is a very frequently used word but the essence of it is i am trying to define it in different sense because of the certain best practices which we have been able to look at and which have which have been able to facilitate such kind of because we need to scale up and that is where the sustainable agri entrepreneurship dimension can actually come in and those feasibilities those intelligent services i am putting it as intelligent services because nobody in the past have actually attempted at times there are very few pockets where such kind of initiations have happened and that is where the two mixing we are talking about business development service cadre provisions and itc chopal kind of sanchalak model maybe even more refined the learnings out of it can feed into defining new boundaries defining new knowledge ecosystems and the ways and means different modules of triggering that is something which we can innovate upon it there are scope of improvement into it but at the same time what is to be tagged along is the incubation ecosystem which is of critical importance the third one and which is i think where i would uh look at our uh, banking personals fraternity at large in terms of looking at what is called as what is called as the customized need based finance now why am i talking and why am i using this word this customized need based finance if you look at the need of a agri enterprise it is just not the term loan because that's the term loan is what is very close to the heart of any banking institution and they are normally trying to fix up a financial product or a loan product for that matter based upon this particular boundary i have offered you one of the examples which is related to em3 
but there are several examples which have established a fact that a quasi equity financing why am i using the word quasi equity financing because i am not drawing upon the equity of certain uh, individuals or certain companies but i am looking forward to certain defined business plan wherein i get to know the nodes where i can have those set of customized finance available to me in terms of quasi equity financing which is available because the seasonality is very different in agri enterprises the kind of uh, uh, you know uh, pitfalls that we encounter in terms of establishment in terms of viabilities is of a different nature as far as agri enterprises are concerned it is just not the classical ball bearing enterprise it is just not the classical diesel engine enterprise it is just not the classical any other enterprise that we have seen cross board in the manufacturing sector but a customized need based finance is the need of the hour of course there are many uh, master circulars which are now after covid situation they have increased the numbers have increased of such master circulars from rbi but uh, the economists those who are there uh, listening to this particular presentation will appreciate that the financial linkage has to have certain kind of processes certain kind of tools certain kind of the the basel 3 norms and basel 3 norms are the norms which are across board defined by the indian bankers association and those set of financial linkages are very very important and customized and of course once the customized finance is available the financial linkage is available there has to be need of what is called as ongoing hand holding and the down below i have mentioned a figure or that is only 5% of the msme enterprises are institutional financed everything is not very rosy as far as the msme sector goes it is just the 5% of the msmes which are being financed institutionally financed so i am very sure that now this finance is going to whom i will not deliberate upon that but what i am trying to look at is if i have coined the word small is beautiful and if i am trying to look at sustainable dimension of an agri enterprise the rest of it is what is the domain what is available to us is the small little enterprises if these banking or the financial institutions can get into a customized need based finance evolve what is called as a quasi equity financing models and also come up with certain appropriate tools and instruments or processes and which will help define and clarify upon the master circulars which are there from the reserve bank of india in july 2019 there was a master circular which talked about very appropriate uh, institutional financing models but has not worked now fpos for that matter there is a tug of war which is going on in terms of how do we actually provide those kind of equity financing uh, uh, support to these fpos fpos have a lot of potential nabard has been instrumental nabard is also a refinancing organization has in its domain various kind of regional rural banks as well now when i am trying to talk about small enterprises to be set up down at the level of not maybe the big ones as what we have, we get to see in the urban centers it might not be crores of investments which is going on into these agri enterprises but maybe very small ones with investment as little as maybe 1 to 2 crores or maybe 5 crores for that matter or maybe to very starts with very small even 50 lakhs of an investment and those are the kind of models which we need to pick up and those who have worked well because that's where the domain what we actually require as far as agri enterprise is concerned it has to be very very pocket specific it has to be supply chain specific it has to be demand specific and where we can build upon the supply side of it and where we can talk about those urban economies to be attended to and also the transforming economies to be attended to 
with an eye on all those impacts and outcomes what we have talked about. So uh, these are the three set of ecosystems, knowledge, incubation, and the missing bank banking ecosystem, which is actually very, very critical as far as the agri-enterprise ecosystem is concerned. Uh, this may not be true for the uh, classical enterprise this thing, because there are various uh, instruments, there are various ways and means by which people have come up with a lot of innovative mechanisms. And there are lobbying bodies, as I have mentioned about CIAs and associate kind of bodies who are looking at facilitating all this. But our agri-enterprise ecosystem is actually not able to get those kind of facilitations. The moment we talk about dependent upon particular pockets, dependent upon productivity, dependent upon seasonality, I think the confidence level of our bankers decreases a lot. And that is the reason why I'm talking about these customized need based finance. Uh, let's come down to the uh, next. What are the kind of interventions that we are talking about with uh, this? Now I'm talking about several set of mapping which has actually to go into. And that mapping is what is required to establish and consolidate what is called as a knowledge ecosystem. What works where, in what manner, we need to have those set of mapping to be in place in a holistic manner for a typical agro enterprise to survive and offer its services. Because we ourselves are having a basket of choice where we talk about Let's get into X enterprise. Let's get into Y enterprise. Let's get into something of nature, which is related to food processing and all. But these are all classical school of thoughts. The reason why I'm talking about mapping is where is the potential of making our existence? And what are those pockets which will help us establish that kind of a thing? This has been done. This is, please don't uh, uh, construe as that this is something which is a figure which I have mentioned, but this kind of a mapping has been attempted. I myself has, have attempted such kind of a mapping in Karnul district of, it was earlier in Andhra Pradesh, but now it is in Telangana. And where I got an opportunity in association with the Ministry of Agriculture to get into it. And we have done that mapping. And there are, it also, what did it do? It did identify smaller ones like there are uh, i was giving you an example of oil oil sector now there are very very small little mini oil mills which have come up now aggregation of all these because most of them are not able to sell to a larger audience they are not scaling up there are certain constraints so if we do a proper mapping of the kind of oil such mini oil units which are available in that particular region what happens is you are able to understand in what form, in what format, in what manner do I establish my own enterprise and which can help be more sustainable, be more specific, and also achieve a scale which is in the interest of both the demand as well as the supply. Now, getting back to the next stage of the interventions, what is important for us beyond mapping is to understand what is called as triggering. Now, this triggering process is very, very important. Where do we do that? And that is the reason why I'm talking about the knowledge ecosystem. That triggering is the first stage of orientation. Then we get into what is called as selection and business feasibility analysis. Why I'm talking about triggering? Because that sets in the tone of identifying the right kind of human resources, identifying the right kind of business development service providers who will actually facilitate at the end of the day, the processes which we are trying to get into. And they are actually the ears and the eyes of the agri enterprise which is going to be set up. So this, this will, and that will help us decide how do we select and how do we look at the business feasibility part of it. Who does, in what pocket, in what is the radius, what kind of crop, what kind of requirement of services, whether it is just related to primary processing, whether it is related to more advanced processing, what is that possible and feasible is something what can we can get into. Now, uh, 
in order to uh, arrive at all this, and once we have looked at the feasibility part of it, it is important. Uh, these are all the uh, snapshots which we have taken for the business due diligence and the credit appraisal and the credit rating. Now, there are mechanisms which are there uh, in order to establish what works, what doesn't work. We are also trying to look at competition. Competition is, there might be several small players down below. There might be several such, uh, you know, people, those who are there, um, who are already associated with the markets. They might not be interested at times. Who are, who are our competitors? Now, uh, a business feasibility assessment on some of these variables, what I have just uh, mentioned down below on the x-axis, sales per day, the gross profit margin, the net profit margin, growth in the last two years of those uh, smaller ones, those who have been established, business competitiveness, days of raw material stock, days of finished stock, you know, all those are the things which will help us understand what is the competition level and what is the kind of credit which will require in what manner, what is the seasonality. And that rating is actually required and done. We have done it at certain locations and this is one out of a case. And we are trying to look at, here the word Mandal has been written because at certain places we use a synonym of Taluka as Mandal and certain places of course in blocks. So uh, these are the kind of informations which are very critical to arrive at. Now the next stage, what is coming in is the capacity building part. And that capacity building is maybe on the lines of the ITC, Chopal, the Sanchalak model, or maybe even beyond that, because even uh, for that matter, very recently, about uh, three years back, uh, 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 there is a professor of marketing in Harvard, uh, Harvard Business School who had done the sustainability dimension of the enterprises development in the rural sector and with particular emphasis on the agriculture sector in terms of looking at what can be the ways and means of facilitating certain knowledge, certain soft skills and the domain skills, which, will, which are very critical for the survival because it's a progression model, it's a cascading model that I'm talking about. Until unless we have a soft skills built in, until unless we have a domain skill built in, we are not able to make the enterprise, the agri enterprise survive or come to a particular viable solution. So that's the capacity building that we are referring to. And it is very much required and desired. Next, what comes in as a financial linkage with suitable products. As I have mentioned the ecosystem part, the missing uh, financial ecosystem part, I think the financial linkage with suitable financial product, it is actually not the product of a, of a consumption nature, but I'm talking about a linkage of a suitable loan product or a financial product. So that linkage is what will be critical. I might end up buying a stock of, maybe to make my oil milling unit viable, just not the groundnut which is available locally, but maybe even for that matter, mustard oil from other regions. But the seasonality of it differs. Sunflower oil for that matter, castor oil for that matter. Castor is available in plenty in Gujarat. It's a leading producer or a state producer as such in the, in the national economy. Now, these are the kind of financial linkages that we are talking about because of the seasonality. Now, when we talk about these micro enterprises or the smaller agri enterprises, we are able to develop what is called as a database and that database is further aggregated into what is called as a situation which is there and which is I'm also offering you another performance tracking mechanism which can be established as an agri enterprise for the performance tracking to happen with the customized data collection tools which we can have for these sustainability index to be arrived at. The person who had asked about the sustainability index, I'm just trying to slowly uh, uh, slowly link them up with the kind of sustainability that I'm talking about. If we are able to arrive at 
these incubation systems, these knowledge systems, and the financial product ecosystem. We will generate suitable amount of database, which will be on a certain periodicity basis, maybe weekly, maybe yearly, or whatever it is, which will help us track down what is the status of our agri enterprises which are being established and which will give more credence, more confidence to the financial institutions to lend. Because what is happening is the having uh, not of uh, less of a confidence in the financial uh, intermediation which is now happening by the some of the people out there, they are not able to finance the way it requires the money at times. I want to scale up for a very critical technology gap which is there in my unit. I want to put up what is called as a standardization tool, which will bring in a lot of laser based techniques, which will bring in a lot of standards, which will help me to export. Now, there are mechanisms. There are, of course, to start with, there are barcode mechanisms which are there. Now, those are the things which have not been tracked upon. Those are the things which have not been attended to in the past. And this is a uh, information system we, which will be which we are able to establish, which will help us track down those performance levels. And what is what I am trying to talk about is incubate these enterprises for a long term sustainability. They will be relevant. They will be they will be efficient. They will be uh, uh, more economic. They will be more innovative if we are able to track them down and also give them that kind of a support to incubate. And that incubation is something which will lead them to also take along the farming community, take along the business development service providers, will also spur new dimensions of non-farm sector enterprises in that particular local area. And that will also bring in what is called as uh, a sustainability dimension. Now, let us uh, take an example of the Kirloskar company model. Now the Kirloskar company was evolved because they, there was a requirement of the water table going down, diesel engines is a requirement. They came up with that particular unit. But at the same time, what has happened is there are about not less than, uh, I'm giving you a figure of 2017 because that's the survey which was done last and government of Gujarat did that. But around Kirloskar, there are 2,428 different kind of non-farm sector enterprises which have come up, which are actually facilitating ultimately at the end of the day, the demand and supply side of the Kirloskar model company. Now, similar can be the case for any other kind of an enterprise which we are talking about. The sustainability dimension can be one, one aspect of it, but this is actually spurring what is called as unemployment. This is actually spurring looking at the intermediate impacts, which is likely to happen. And only then one can visualize and look at, okay, farming or farm sector is a viable proposition. And the primacy, which has not been offered in the past, I think that's the primacy we need to offer. Because for the agri enterprises, there has to be some, uh, you know, uh, sustainability of the people, those who are getting into these kind of people, some sensible, uh, domain, soft skills, domain knowledge, which are there, which are able to offer you that regular set of produce or the demand, which is there for that particular primary product, which you are going to take into consideration, or maybe even for that matter, offer your information services or offer your customized, uh, you know, uh, instruments or customized equipments uh, for that particular services to be more strengthened. These are all possible only when we are trying to incubate in this particular manner, the way and means of looking at how well we can get into it. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to look at sales per day is important. Net profit per set is important. And these are the tracking mechanisms which will be, which have to be built into. Working capital is of course important. What are the kind of employment which it can generate, which it can offer. Credit rating by the uh, Indian Bankers Association will also be uh, very, very important. We'll have to build in a very different mechanisms of looking at moratoriums and the repayment. 
and I'm sure the repayment rates will always be influenced by tracking upon the performances based upon the sales per day, net profit, working capital. So these are some of the very critical things which our own agri enterprises, which are being established, which might be small in nature, and that's the reason I'm I'm, I'm more forced to speak upon it, because the big ones have a capability of accessing these services of hiring a very good company secretary or a chartered accountant to track upon all this. And they might be all the more, because that's uh, roughly to the tune of maybe hundreds of crores or thousands of crores that they have made an investment. So what is important at the end of the day is how do we improve upon this domain of small, agri, sustainable enterprise domain, which will facilitate a higher repayment rate and will also build in the confidence and also help establish the enterprises better. So this is something which is what was talked about. Uh, if you look at the uh, impact, what is going to have, as of now, the manufacturing sector, this is a very uh, uh, specific cases of some locations. It might be just 2%. Services has gone up to 44% at certain places. Trading is happening. Uh, agro service centers are coming up, but for whom, in what manner? Over a five year projection period, this is the kind of percentage of the scale that I'm talking about. And I'm sure the small enterprises, the linkages that we are talking about, the cumulative turnover is going to increase. There is an incremental employment generation that is going to be gained. The number of enter enterprises are going to increase. And of course, at the end of the day, these are all going to happen by the banking engagements that we are trying to talk about. And this is the impact of an enabling ecosystem for that matter. What is also important to look at is how well we are looking at the incremental employment for 25 people in a typical agri enterprise over five years. Because the local production is important, local consumption is important. Capital accumulation is important. Increase in the purchasing power is also what is going to happen. Increase in demand is also what is likely to come up. Employment generation, of course, is what is. So I'm trying to hinge upon certain critical aspects of output indicators and also to build values and also to build upon what Spoonbetter has actually said is small, is beautiful, and which is actually the, the need of the hour. It will also bring in local production, local consumption demand. And I'm, I'm sure I have picked up this word with the what uh, our own dispensation, our own uh, government is now trying to put up. And that is also leading towards what is called as capital accumulation, increase in purchasing power. And this is a worth trying pilot across some of the regions in Gujarat as well. And I would appreciate that if there are certain individuals or certain potential agri entrepreneurs who can actually experiment with it or look upon this particular model, I think that's something which is which will be quite welcome in nature. Uh, in a way, the things that we have just now spoken about, it is actually leading towards what is called as the, uh, what are the products that we are talking about? It is talking about digitization of creation of knowledge products that we should be as an institution or maybe as an agriculture university one can look at, or maybe even some of the uh, entrepreneurs can look, at, look into that how can we develop those knowledge products which is related to soft skills and the domain skill and which can be taken upon very well by the village youths and also uh, maybe not villages, even for that matter, the urban youths as well, but who can get interested into this particular domain. And there can be a process which we can think upon using our own tablets and the projectors for the last mile dissemination of the information. How can it be possible? Now, as far as the incubation ecosystem goes, is a personalized advisory services by the village youths using IT, maybe a potential agri entrepreneur can get into it. Use of IT for the enterprise feasibility analysis is what is called for and what is required at the end of the day. What I'm also trying to look at is having said about the enabling ecosystem, the banking ecosystem, 
the credit appraisal mechanisms, the performance rating by the village youths using IT, or maybe even by a potential entrepreneur for that matter, who can get into such kind of creation of such models. And these are the innovations that one can talk about. Uh, mobile, it's not booking, sorry for uh, typo error. It's mobile bookkeeping by a, by a small little entrepreneur. And these are the kind of innovations one can look at as far as the, uh, uh, the enabling ecosystem goes. We can have what is called as the sustainable cost to the use of village youths and the use of ID platforms. So what I'm trying to uh, profess here and uh, you know, bring upon a, a domain of understanding here is more in terms of looking at how are we getting into a sustainable cost dimension? How are we getting into a creation of a model, a business model of some kind? There are possibilities if we want to stagger our approach of understanding or stagger our uh, uh, you know, uh, business opportunity identification basket, and also look upon the 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 agri entrepreneurship incubation model, what is being professed nowadays, in a very different way. To look at what is possible, what is feasible, in something of this kind, I think that sets the tone of the establishment of a sustainable agri enterprise model in the long run. I will stop here. I think I have been able to uh, uh, speak my mind, but I'll try to understand and also uh, get connected with the people around from the participants who would like to have certain questions and bring in more clarity upon what I have just presented. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. You have uh, really covered a lot of things under this presentation. And that's why we have number of questions also out of that presentation. So I'll start asking the questions from you. Yeah, please. Yeah. So um, we focus on input management, its cost and marketing. And moreover, we are now focusing all, also on consultancy. Uh, do not we think we lack in financial management, SOP, operations, scalability, such things? Yeah, yeah, very good. In fact, uh, uh, the, the SOPs which are uh, lacking as far as financial management is concerned is what I'm trying to attend to by having these performance tracking mechanisms in place. That is one. And that is at the level of the enterprises that I've spoken about. And at the level of the institutions, what I'm talking about that, uh, God forbid, I'm done away with this word called term loan. I, I think I should be now focusing more on what is customized, what is required by an agri entrepreneur alone, because it's a very different domain and a lot of seasonalities are there. A lot of different nature of, uh, you know, uh, uh, requirements are there. And what is important at, as of now is to kind of understand that what works and what manner. So, the internal performance tracking, what I've just now mentioned, decides upon the SOPs. Where do I tweak in terms of keeping the inventories of such a nature? Or what is the kind of inventory management mechanism that I should be evolving? Because let me tell you uh, a small little incidence of some of the every entrepreneurs which I have come across. Uh, there are people, those who have gone into uh, very small little primary processing and they are stacking up the primary processing products and they are trying to look at certain markets which will help them supply at the end of the day. But what is happening? The, the, the financial management tools at their levels are not clear in terms of what is the kind of working capital that is being kind of uh, invested. What is the kind of uh, risk appetite that particular person has. So the financial management tools have to take into account all this. And this is at the level of the entrepreneur alone. And I'm sure if among the audience, if we have among the participants, if we have few people who can develop certain applications, at least 
which is operational, which is doable, which is functional at the level of the entrepreneurs, which doesn't require much of a sophistication to track down those components of the financial management at the enterprise level. And I'm sure there will be answers which will be offered by the institutions at the end of the day, because that will help establish certain SOPs and having established SOPs, I think the external institutions, the financial institutions, the banking people will gain a lot of confidence to lend it at the level and at the kind of financial product that we are all desiring and asking for. Okay. Okay, sir. So is there any policy initiative taken by the government mm -hmm. to encourage entrepreneurship in agriculture? Uh, uh, I would quote upon um, the, uh, I think uh, most of the participants might be aware about the uh, Rashtri Krishi Vikas Yojana and uh, the several set of, uh, you know, agri-enterprise incubation centers which have been established across. I think that's an existing model long since years, many years it is there. But I'm trying to talk about the changing the nature of the services which these institutions have to actually offer, which I have just spoken about. And, but at the same time, I will pick up something which was announced on August 8th and by the Prime Minister. And uh, uh, it's an agri enterprise investment, infrastructure related investment, this thing. And uh, I'll be more than happy to, because it is yet not available on the website. I was offered a hard copy of that particular uh, you know, uh, the fund allocations which have happened. Uh, so I can, uh, you know, scan it or maybe take a photograph of it and, and share with you all. And if people are interested, they can go through it. It's a, I think, a well thought out uh, model. It is actually having certain kind of interest subvention of 3% around. Uh, uh, and there is a cap on the interest. Uh, the cap is like you, the, the bankers cannot charge more than 9%. So the entrepreneur has to pay at the end of the day just 6%. So this is something which is very, very uh, fancy at this stage. It has not gone into the implementation or the execution because it's just about 20 days old. Uh, but the people are vying for such kind of project proposals. And I think I'm sure uh, if one can get hold of uh, the district development manager in Nabad at, in the relevant districts, they will be definitely having a copy of it. And the collector is the chairman of it. And, and that's a very recently announced one. Uh, there are various other uh, uh, financial intermediation kind of uh, mechanisms which uh, the Reserve Bank of India has actually uh, tried to get into. But these are all uh, related to tweaking upon the amount, tweaking upon the, 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 the line of credit kind of a thing. And the classical ones are already there and people might be aware about it. I should not be speaking on that. But I think it's worth looking at something which was very recently announced by the Prime Minister. And it's a purely enterprise entrepreneurship based. And there is a lot of focus nowadays. And I was talking to Dr. Pundit yesterday and he did mention about that there is a very significant focus on a momentous change which is going to happen in a localized context. Believe me, I'm again using the word localized context. And in the localized context, what I'm trying to profess and what I'm trying to talk about is a small agri enterprise models, which will actually work and which will be viable. And everybody will be able to survive demand, supply, stakeholders, non-farm. I think those are the kind of emphases which we need to have. And the government has a lot of emphasis. And it is talking about, uh, I, I, do, I forget the, 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 the adjective which was used by the Prime Minister, but I think vocal for the local or something like that. So uh, that's the uh, uh, adage I think uh, one should always adopt. And I, I think it's a good message by the uh, uh, by, by, by our uh, uh, you know, prime minister in terms of looking at certain uh, mechanisms which will be possible. And those are the talk, not only talks, it is being made possible and feasible. And those are going to be feasible. There, I think now the time has come that we have to start small and we have to be very, very viable at the point. Yes. And those are, and we can have many, many potential basket of opportunities for each of the agri, potential agri entrepreneurs. And if one goes into the words which I have just written down here, there are immense possibilities into it. I'm sorry, uh, I'm just trying to coax upon and persuade people to read between lines of my presentation and then evolve the basket opportunity. But let's not just sit upon and wait for the government to start 
announcing certain uh, you know policies or the schemes it is there in place let us it can be fit into certain uh, already announced schemes or there there is a openness within the financial institutions now to look upon the localized customized agri business models so that's the time and it's a good harvesting time that i think one should always uh, harness upon it uh, as fast as possible so uh, are the farmers are aware about these policies or initiatives that are taken by the government means how much they are motivated or how we can motivate them to come more towards the entrepreneurship side like to convert agriculture into agri business uh there are two things which i will uh, you know uh, say that you know uh, what is uh, now lacking at this stage is the information services and which yes. i have been again using the word uh, mm -hmm. the decision support system which has to be evolved by the uh, inculcation of some kind of agri enterprise model is somewhere around information services is what i have just seen in the itc jopal model by the sanchalak model but i think uh, let us not wait for the kvks alone let us not wait for because we can't just have one extension officer at the block level uh, you know allocated by the government to kind of look at the extension services and all it's beyond the reach and the diversity of the nature of services which is required by the farmers so such information services is one other potential and it is actually lacking and what is there are a lot of lacks into it even uh, i i won't say just the package of practices i i will just say that uh, uh pepper can be grown extensively in the state of gujarat even i was quite apprehensive but believe me there are uh, uh, many uh, you know entrepreneurial models of farming which are now evolving and there are individuals certain people those who have been bred on academic lines and they have get got to know about such kind of varieties such kind of possibilities they are experimenting with it and they have done it they could not do it do it in open field situation they have done it in a greenhouse situation and they have grown pepper now I, i see the reason i am not saying that we have to go into a farming business we have to just think upon if pepper is coming up what are the associated set of industries associated set of supply chains which can evolve what are the other set of business opportunities out of pepper one can get it and that is where the lies where i think a business opportunity identification exercise of a nature uh, what is specific and what is uh, uh, required at the end of the day is important and that is what is i think uh, uh, more important for us to follow uh, in a way i am looking at the uh, the right financial products after taking into account the uh, seasonality after taking into account the vulnerability after taking into account the risk appetite of such kind of small businesses also taking into account the growth growth cycle also taking into like uh, what i would very classically put it as asset liability gap uh, i will also talk about the the need magnification potential of that particular enterprise uh, i think there is a time sensitivity attached to such kind of sustainable agri agriculture enterprises so these are the suitable modifications which are required and this set of information is actually not available at times i think we need to have certain enterprises certain entrepreneurs who are able to inform not only the farming community for certain things but also to the external world in terms of what is required so uh 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 putting up a standard credit appraisal mechanism might not work for such kind of agri enterprises because we are at the end of the day assessing the credit worthiness of it which is dependent on several uh, uh factors what i have just narrated the growth cycle the asset liability gap the need magnification the the risk appetite or even for that matter the vulnerability of the competition that is likely that they are uh, likely to get into so that credit rating that business performance rating somebody some entrepreneur has to speak it out in front of the financial institutions and this can only be done by establishing what is called as a pilot 
there has to be some customized proof of concept which the branch managers can at the end of the day see and they can relate to the credit needs of the sustainable uh, of the agri enterprises alone so i am talking about end to end information sharing it is just not the farming it is beyond that across board the ecosystem that i have just narrated about which will help us understand what is required in what manner so we have a huge gap and potential to and we should start finding out answers of all these problems this is the only Absolutely. way and i would request upon uh, uh, young scientists like you and uh, many others who can uh, mentor the students to offer them certain uh, you know thesis on this things which can establish and put across a message initially because we are uh, at the end of the day into an academic institution domain so our role in a way has to be of that nature where we are trying to offer them certain kind of because at the end of the day what will government do they will kind of constitute a committee a task force which will facilitate agri information services to the farmers fine what is the mechanism they will suggest something they will also constitute a task force for the financial intermediation but what nature a studied model is what is important and there are student communities who will be willing to take on this kind of a challenging task sir on that i would like to ask you few researchable issues on which we should be oriented so that we can orient the students also map up pastors oh, and phd thesis i think uh, i have narrated the uh, various yes then uh, during my talk uh, but at the same time um, uh, one of my seniors dr kundir is sitting there and uh, i think uh, we can arrive at a possible basket of research opportunities and i can share with you all there are immense and i think across board i think the 1100 people those who have enrolled into this if they pick up at 20 of them and make a viable contribution it will make a lot of sense so but it has to move beyond what is called as a yield gap assessment it has to move beyond what we have seen in the past there are people those who are interested to do this of course agronomy biotechnology uh, pathology they are having a very different domain but what is i am trying to look at you know an applied nature of an integrated uh, transdisciplinary research uh, which is likely the need of the hour and i will not have just economists i will not suggest that we should have just economists into it or just the agri enterprise uh, management people into it or uh, but beyond that i think we need to inculcate cross board a body of uh, knowledge uh, you know platform which can provide certain critical inputs to those set of research which we are trying to advocate okay sir the last question i'll ask there are many but i'll uh, end up with this one um how like you have heard about ssip how this ssip and incubation centers can be made more viable more feasible to new entrepreneurs and students two uh, uh, important uh, takeaways which i could give to the ssips is mm -hmm. to look at the look at you know before the establishment of such kind of incubation facilities it is quite critical that there has to be a mapping of the knowledge ecosystem which is actually existing okay and which is required by that particular entrepreneur or in the incubate for that matter to be offered we get to uh, i am sorry i am attached with uh, some of the leading i will not take the name but some of the leading uh, uh, agriculture institutes with these ssips and all but the methodology which is there is uh, an incubator comes uh, sorry an incubate comes in and then we end up saying to them that find googling something in terms of technology available and offering them that this is the support i am offering to you sometimes we preconceive that it is just the finance alone that person is looking for it is not that finance alone so what i am trying to say is the knowledge which is available into a particular domain domain has to be properly mapped by the such kind of ssips which are existing in order to prepare a list of at least in the domain or in the geographical area where they are situated to forecast 
that these are the kind of information which should be available at their end and they should be prepared for it. So this is one critical information gap which is there with these SSIPs. <coughs> the second one is, and I think uh, I'll be more than happy if just not the incubator, incubati, or the technology relationship with the agriculture universities, which is existing as of now. But the way, you know, there are uh, self-employment training institutes which have been established, RCTs which have been established by uh, the banking institutions. Each of, and they have been established all across. I think their number as of now is 546 around in every district. What the government has done is that uh, they have uh, uh, given one crore for the establishment of the building and there is one, normally it is considered as a punishment posting, but there is one banker who is posted as a director of RCT. But what I'm trying to communicate is very important that such kind of institution which has a banker into it, and it is also interested with what is called as a product and process related inputs. And SSIPs can are the places where there are n number of applications which are coming in for several kinds of demand patterns. If they can be linked up to such kind of finance as well as the training inputs which they are liable to offer. Or the kind of, because they will understand, because the financial product is something which they will be able to tweak upon. They will understand that this is actually the requirement, the customized requirement. And then they will be able to place it before the, the, they might not be the sanctioning authority, but they'll be able to place it before the branch managers and then uh, take it along for the own products. So something of this nature, wherein we are able to bridge in the gap of the absence of a financial intermediation mechanism by the presence of a banker for that matter, or for that matter, any representative who is a lead bank manager for that matter, the cross board in such kind of SSIP is the critical need of the hour. We should not be making a business plan and then going to a banker. We should take along a banker to prepare a business plan. I don't know what is available at your doorsteps. So I'm offering a recipe what that is what is digestible to that particular institu institution at the end of the day. I am not making we normally ask them kya khana. So uh, sometimes they say a book lagi hai, but book nahi lagi hogi. They might be demanding something very specific. So we all understand and we should appreciate and try to link up to a normal everyday life that SSIPs have to exist at the end of the day in demand, putting up a demand to the financial institution or the intermediation, which is critical. And we should place on the platter what they are able to digest at the end of the day. And that is what is required. So two things, mapping of all the knowledge which is available in every domain and should not that at the last hour, at the end of the hour, we go fran frantically looking forward to the kind of support to be offered to the incubators and also integrating with the presence of the bankers, integrating with the presence of the financial institutions or the lead bank managers for that matter. That's an entity which can actually play a lot of lead role Sometimes they may not be very instrumental, but it has worked at several times. Uh, I think these are the two key takeaways which I would offer to the SSIPs. That's a very nice suggestion, sir. I'll put it forward to the SSI SSIP center here. Uh, apart from them, all the questions, I'll mail it to you. Uh, whenever you get time, please answer these questions because there are many and please. we have a time limit. So, sir, thank you so much for taking this lecture and giving us time from your so busy schedule to us. You have covered a lot, many things. Lot means lot. Um, like you have covered about the price volatility situation, crop-based institution, how to transfer an economy and what is the needs of transferring economy. Like the services sectors are growing, manufacturing sectors are growing, but agriculture sector is going down. So how we need to take it on the upper side? how non-farm non and farm-based products can be integrated together, but why we need to find out that uh, this high value agri and precision agriculture, how they will be have an intermediate impact on the growth of the economy. 
you have also highlighted the rural urban income disparity where you talked about how cash flows of a manufacturing se sector or it sector and the net income flow which is which they are gaining is totally different from the agriculture sector we understood about the how to link the sustainability with the uh, entrepreneurship like you have talked about the case study of em3 which is providing uberized farm services uh, which which is also attached with itcz chopal syngenta foundation to re reach out to the uh, farmers john dare is also there to help in equipment training of em3 operators which is a complete example of sustainable entrepreneurship so in the next lecture you have talked about the ecosystem of enabling ecosystem of agripreneurs where you have talked about the challenges like knowledge banking ecosystem and incubation which are very critical in facilitating the in a, this ecosystem to happen um, you have talked about the equity finance uh, msmes agri entrepreneurship ecosystem and there are many uh, impact of agricultural economy so these are few of the things that i can take out from your presentation to say it now but you have covered a lot of things sir thank you so much sir and uh, uh, we will discuss about the researchable issues also uh, that we should take for us also to do research and for our students too so we will be doing that uh, thanks a lot and uh, i would especially like to offer thanks to uh, the to you and uh, dr pondir and the head of the institution dr lag in fact uh, uh, it was an opportunity and a good platform for me to speak my mind uh, you know uh, after being in the teaching profession uh, we all venture and uh, we look forward to certain platforms to speak uh, because we are habituated to speak so yes. uh, i i i would like to thank to offer me this kind of a platform i don't know whether i have been able to do a proper justice to the topic or not but this is something which is i have set the ball thinking in terms of the minds of the potential agri entrepreneurs and i did not uh, purposefully get into a classical uh, you know things which are normally being taught by you all in the university system yes, <laughs> so i have deviated a bit and i have tried to make it more applied in nature and uh, i think that will give us give them lot of thought processes i forgive if i have not been able to uh, purely live up to your expectation but at least i have tried my level best thanks you a lot you have